Hello, good morning, Atman. Good morning, ma'am. How are you? Very good, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a trouble with the with my camera. I need to go. Um, Roxana, voy a salir, voy a ingresar de nuevo porque la cámara no me enciende, ¿ok? Okay. Ya el profesor dile que puede empezar, please. Yeah, uh, you can start the class, okay? Okay, uh, no problem. I, I turn my camera, I have a trouble. No, I that's know. fine, that's fine, no problem. Uh, but, but I need access, okay, I can share the screen now, thank you. Okay. okay. Okay, so dear students, welcome to biology class. So our today's topic topics are um, cells, a structure of life, uh, photosynthesis and metabolism and cellular respiration. So these three topics uh, we will discuss in our today's class. So let us begin from cells and the structure of life. So uh, at this point, as you guys already know that uh, we have uh, two types of cells. We have animal cells and we have plant cells. And uh, uh, I hope you guys can uh, see the screen that I am sharing, right? Is, can you guys see the screen? Uh, okay, let me uh, let me select this one. Okay, I think this is more clear now. <clears throat> okay, so uh, cell, a structural and functional unit uh, of a living organism, all living things are made of cells. And we have two types, animal and plant cells. So if I ask you that, what is the unit that your house is built of, anyone? I have a question for you, that uh, you guys are living uh, in your beautiful homes, you have houses. So what's the unit thing that your house is made of? Can you think of the unit? Anyone? You, you, you guys can uh, type in uh, the answer in chat as well. Uh, let me repeat the question. Uh, I'm asking that, uh, what is the unit that your house is uh, built on? It's a brick, right? So bricks, uh, they, they is, we can say that brick is uh, a unit for your house. Your house is made up of bricks, okay? So lots and lots of bricks. So uh, these bricks, uh, they, uh, when, when, when uh, you can, we can say that uh, they, are in, they are in more in numbers. So they, they, can, they can make one room, then they can make a living room and then, then they, they make a dining room and, uh, and they build a house. So just like a brick uh, in the living organisms, we have cells uh, that make all of the structures. Okay, so let us let us uh, move on. So here you guys can see that we have uh, uh, the pictures uh, representing the animal cell and the plant cell. And uh, we will discuss the cell organelles um, step by step in the coming uh, slides. So on the left hand side, uh, we have uh, this uh, animal cell in orange color. And uh, you guys can see that we have uh, a nucleus at the center. And uh, this nucleus is, re is responsible for controlling all uh, what is inside the cell. Okay. So uh, the all the other structures they are called uh, cell organelles, including this nucleus. So if we start from uh, the uh, outermost uh, membrane, so we see we have a cell membrane here. Okay, so you can see this is the outermost layer uh, of the cell, and uh, then we have ribosomes, we have lysosome, we have centrioles. We have uh, peroxisomes, we have Golgi apparatus, we have a cytoplasm, we have mitochondrion, and this blue colored uh, cell organelles, these are the mitochondrions. So we will discuss all of these and their function one by one. 
we have smooth endoplasmic reticulum, we have rough endoplasmic uh, reticulum. So this is the uh, structure for the um, cell. Uh, would you, if you guys could excuse me for a minute, uh, I'll Okay, so uh, we have uh, a plant cell on the right hand side. So these two cells, uh, they are mostly uh, similar in function uh, with just a little difference and we will see what the difference is. So uh, we can see that we have a vacuole, this purple colored cell organelle. This is called a vacuole. So this is a large central vacuole at the center of the, uh, of the plant cell. So this vacuole, is missing uh, in an animal cell. If you if you look at the animal cell, you will not find this vacuole. Okay, and uh, another thing which is missing from the animal cell and that uh, includes that is included in the plant cell, and that is chloroplast. So chloroplast vacuole, and the final thing that we see uh, in plant cell but not in animal cell that is uh, a cell wall, this one. Okay, so let me get a pointer so that you guys can see where I'm pointing. Okay, so here we go. So this cell wall, this green colored structure is missing uh, in uh, animal cell, okay? So you guys should keep this in mind that what differentiates uh, an animal cell from a plant cell so animal cell does not contain a vacuole, animal cell does not contain chloroplast, and uh, an animal cell does not contain a uh, cell wall. So these th three uh, differences uh, uh, you need to keep uh, in mind and you need to remember all the time. So I hope it is clear uh, so far and uh, we can uh, proceed. If you guys have any questions, you can uh, use your mic and you can ask the questions. Or uh, if you want to uh, type in the, ch uh, in the chat box, you can uh, type the comments, uh, you can type the questions and uh, ask. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, so let us proceed. So the first thing uh, that we will study uh, in the structure of uh, the cell, uh, which is that contain is, is, a, is a plasma membrane. So plasma membrane is the same as the cell membrane. So cell membrane is the outermost surf surface of the animal cell, or we can call it a boundary. The outermost boundary of a cell is called uh, a plasma membrane or a cell membrane. So what is the function of this uh, plasma uh, membrane? Uh, it is the outer lining of the cell. It separates the cell from its environment and allows materials to enter and leave the cell. So if you guys can see here, this is the inside of the cell, this blue portion, and this white portion is outside the cell. And we have this uh, boundary uh, a layer that is separating the outside environment of the cell from the inside environment of the cell. And uh, uh, as we have discussed in our previous classes, that cells, uh, they produce uh, useful molecules, proteins, and that are used by our bodies. So those proteins, uh, with the help of these uh, cell membranes, they leave the cell and they can go outside uh, in, in in our bodies so outside in the outside environment of the cell so this is the structure and the function of a cell so in our previous lecture uh, two lectures back we discussed uh, the structure of cell wall and cell membrane in detail so we have a lipid bilayer so you can see that you have you have these brown molecules here then we have uh, proteins 
and then we have uh, another uh, brown layer of brown molecules here. So this is a bilayer. Bi means two. Okay. So mono mono means one, mono means one, and bi means two. So we have a we have a bi uh, layer. Okay. So this is basically the function uh, and the structure of the cell membrane. Uh, and now let us go uh, and discuss uh, other organelles. So we have cytoplasm. So sometimes students get confused uh, in the cytoplasm and in the cell membrane. So cell membrane is just the boundary of the uh, cell. This white portion, uh, we can say that this is uh, the, the cell membrane. So inside, the cell membrane, the orange portion uh, as shown here in this diagram. So this entire soup uh, liquid like structure, uh, this is called the cytoplasm, right? So as you can see here, it says that uh, cytoplasm is made of up of jelly like fluid. Uh, it's a jelly like fluid. I'm sure you guys have eaten jelly, uh, all of you. So this fluid like structure is called a cytosol uh, and other structures that surround the nucleus. So cytoplasm is a soup or jelly-like fluid uh, that a, a cell contains inside it. So all of the soup or the jelly-like fluid is called cytoplasm and uh, do not get confused uh, in between a cell membrane or a plasma membrane and a cytoplasm. I hope this is clear now. Uh, I would request you guys to uh, take notes as well uh, uh, with, with, with the lecture so that you guys can uh, remember uh, stuff that I am pointing out and uh, you guys can revise uh, after this lecture. Okay, so we discussed cytoplasm and we discussed uh, a plasma membrane or a cell membrane. So another cell organelle, uh, another uh, uh, like we can say small structure inside the cell uh, that is very important uh, for the function of the cell that is called uh, a cytoskeleton. So what is a cytoskeleton? Uh, this is at the electron microscope diagram of the cytoskeleton. Uh, the cytoskeleton is a network of long fibers that can make up and the cell's structural frame framework. So you, we can say that this is basically the, the uh, like the framework when you guys are uh, like constructing a ceiling of the house, you keep lots and lots of wood uh, like beams, right? Uh, and you, you, have, you guys have different bars and uh, pipes. So all of these structures, they are called a cytoskeleton. So what, is the purpose of the cytoskeleton inside the cell uh, is that they give uh, the cell um, its proper uh, structure and they can make they can help the cell in the movement in its movement inside the body and uh, the movement within the cell so this is our uh, cytoskeleton i hope it's clear so far uh, and if you guys have any questions, please uh, ask uh, where, uh, by using your mic or you can type in the chat box. Okay, so this was the third organelle that we discussed, and this is found in both plants uh, and animal cells. So all the organelles that we are discussing right now, so they are a part of uh, uh, a plant and uh, an animal cell. Okay. So we have another uh, cell organelle. It is uh, uh, a very useful uh, portion of the cell. Uh, this is called endoplasmic reticulum. And in short, we call it ER. So this organelle uh, helps process molecules created by the cell. As we have studied before, that the function of cell is to uh, synthesize proteins. And proteins are very, very important molecules, and we cannot live or function without uh, protein molecules. So 
uh, these are basically the factories where uh, the proteins are built uh, and the uh, endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum also transports and these molecules to their specific destinations, either inside or outside the cell. So uh, we can say that these are uh, pizza delivery guys, right? Uh, like for example, uh, a restaurant makes a pizza and uh, you need it at home. So uh, a motorcycle guy or delivery guy will, will take the pizza from uh, a restaurant and it will bring it to you. So basically, uh, the endoplasmic reticulum uh, performs the function of a delivery guy. Okay, so it transports the molecules within the cell, uh, outside outside the cell, and within the cell where it is needed. So, in short, if you if you want to remember this, just remember that endoplasmic reticulum uh, is the delivery guy, and it transports uh, proteins and other molecules that are required by the cell, uh, within the cell and outside the cell in the body. So this was uh, endoplasmic reticulum. You can see this uh, gray structure. So we have a nucleus in the middle. So whenever you look at a cell structure, so, and if you want to find uh, endoplasmic reticulum, that would, that would be very, very close to the nucleus. So this is the nucleus and then and this purple purple portion is uh, an endoplasmic reticulum, uh, a rough one. And this we have two types of endoplasmic reticulum: a smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and uh, we have a rough endoplasmic reticulum. So this one is here. We have a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So if you go back and look at the structure of the cell here, which I showed you guys in the beginning. So you can see here, this is the nucleus. And here we have the smooth and uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So it will always be very close to the nucleus. If in exam, they ask you to find uh, the endoplasmic reticulum inside the cell. So the best hint would be to look very close to the nucleus and you will find uh, these uh, structures we, uh, with little dots on them. Uh, so these are uh, the endoplasmic reticulums and they transport uh, molecules within and outside the cell. Okay, so let us move on. So this lecture is very, uh, very important. So you guys are learning new things uh, the, and we are going in details. So uh, make use of it and uh, keep taking notes. Uh, and I will ask uh, questions at the end. So uh, I would like you guys to participate in the class, okay? So uh, you guys are uh, silent today. I don't know what's wrong. I hope everything is fine, right? So we have another uh, organelle. We have Golgi uh, apparatus. So uh, let us talk about the Golgi apparatus. So what is Golgi apparatus? These are packages uh, and molecules processed by endoplasmic reticulums uh, and uh, to be transported out of the cell. So basically uh, the delivery guy, uh, endoplasmic reticulum, when wants to uh, tra transport something outside the cell, it changes it into uh, the Golgi apparatus, right? So it is uh, like, like a pizza box. Okay, so a delivery guy will take a, a pizza from a restaurant, it will put it in a box. And uh, uh, when, when the delivery guy will reach your house and it will hand over the pizza uh, with, with the box, okay, uh, with the pizza inside. So the Golgi operators works like uh, a pizza box uh, and it contains the molecules that cells uh, wants to uh, transport uh, outside the cell. Okay, so uh, we, if you can see here in the diagram, uh, we have uh, this uh, endoplasmic reticulum, and then we have the Golgi uh, bodies and the transport vehicle. Look here, this one, so with, with green dots. So this is uh, a small box with the pizza inside, with the cell molecule inside. And here you can see that 
uh, this uh, pizza or on the cellular molecule is leaving the cell, okay, with the process of exocytosis. So this is how the Golgi apparatus works. Uh, what is the function of the Golgi apparatus? It takes uh, what is uh, synthesized inside the uh, endoplasmic reticulum and it transports it uh, outside the uh, cell. Okay, so another uh, uh, organelle that is lysosomes and uh, peroxisomes. So these are uh, also a very important uh, parts of the animal and plant cells. So these are basically the recycling center of the cell, or you can call it a dustbin. So it performs two functions. And the first function is that the recycling of the cell. And another function is like they digest the foreign bacteria and that, that invade the cell uh, rid the cell of toxic substances and recycle worn out cell components. For example, uh, a cell is, uh, is being attacked by uh, a poisonous bacteria or a bacterium. So the lysosomes will come and they will engulf or they will eat that poisonous or toxic substance out from which came from outside the cell. And for example, if a molecule is uh, old and is, is getting old inside the cell and it has been broken down, so uh, the broken molecule will be eaten by these lysosomes. So uh, the lysosomes are represented by the green dot, small green, green dots here. So this is how the lysosomes and uh, the peroxisomes, they work uh, and basically they recycle uh, the, the toxic substances, or uh, we can say that uh, worn out broken uh, molecules. Okay, so uh, another uh, organelle, a very, very important one, and that is called mitochondria. And uh, a mitochondria, uh, we have discussed before, uh, but we are uh, studying it uh, a little bit uh, in, in deeper today. So mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cells. Uh, mitochondria are complex organelles that convert energy uh, from food into a form that the cell can use. So it is the oven, like you have microwave ovens or uh, you, have, you guys have a stove on which you cook stuff, right? When you go to the market and you buy vegetables, sometimes you can each eat vegetables raw, but sometimes you cannot, you have to cook the vegetables to prepare the food. So this is the kitchen of uh, the cell where uh, cell prepares its food, right? And uh, it produces energy. No cell can survive uh, without a mitochondria. Humans cannot survive without mitochondria. Uh, and uh, when we will talk about cellular respiration uh, in this lecture, uh, we will uh, look at the reactions uh, that occur inside the mitochondria and how mitochondria cooks uh, the food for us or how uh, it converts food into energy. So they have their own genetic material uh, separate from the DNA in the nucleus. So as we have studied before that a DNA contains a nucleus. Uh, so the nucleus contains a DNA, I'm sorry. So the nucleus contains a DNA uh, so mitochondria also contains the DNA. It is the only uh, portion of the cell uh, apart from the nucleus that has a DNA. So cell contains two types of DNA. One is a nuclear DNA and the other one is mitochondrial DNA. So it can replicate itself, it can heal itself, it can uh, perform various functions, right? So it is a very, very important uh, cellular uh, component. And it is found in both uh, plants and um, animal cells. Okay, so the boss of the house, nucleus. So nucleus uh, is the boss, it controls the cell, it controls all the functions, all these uh, synthesis that is that takes place 
uh, in the cell. So nucleus serves as the cell's command center, sending directions to the cell to grow, mature, divide, or die. When a cell uh, instructs the nucleus that now you have to, uh, the cell that you have to grow, the cell will start growing, right? If the, if the nucleus tells the cell that you have to divide, uh, the cell will start divi dividing. We, we talked about mitosis and meiosis, if you guys remember. So uh, all the functions are controlled by uh, this nucleus. It also houses DNA. Uh, we just talked about it, uh, which is called deoxyribonucleic acid, uh, the cell's hereditary material. Uh, the nucleus is surrounded by a membrane called uh, the nuclear envelope, uh, which protects the, new, the DNA and separates the nucleus from the rest of the cell. So as you guys can see here, uh, this is the nucleus, uh, the blue portion, and we have a nucleolus inside. And uh, these, the nuclear pores and the threads, the threads that you are seeing here, uh, they are representing and the DNA inside this nucleus. Okay, so now we have ribosomes. So ribosomes, they uh, work uh, with endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, ribosomes are organelles that process the cell's genetic instructions to create proteins. So ribosomes are basically the glasses of the nucleus, like the one that I'm wearing. The ribosomes will look uh, at the DNA and they will read the DNA. And the, if, the, if they see that the DNA is telling them to make a molecule, so they will make that molecule. So these organelles can float freely in the cytoplasm or be connected to the endoplasmic reticulum. So ribosomes and uh, endoplasmic reticulum, they work closely with each other. And this picture, uh, you guys can see that uh, the DNA or the messenger RNA, which was derived from the DNA, it is uh, being read by the ribosome and it is translating the information on the uh, DNA and it is making this molecule, uh, which, is, which is called protein. And protein is made up of amino acids, right? So, so this is uh, also a very important uh, cell organelle, cell cellular component. And if there is a problem uh, in this organelle or ribosome, so uh, we see lots and lots of diseases uh, in those uh, patients. Okay, so this is the uh, cell organelle which is not found in an animal cell and it is only uh, present in a plant cell. We call it a vacuole. So, we have uh, different types of vacuoles in plant cells. So vacuole basically store uh, fluids and uh, uh, food for, for the plant cell. So we have lytic vacuole and we have protein storage vacuole. It's a peanut shaped vacuole uh, with, with, uh, with food inside, with proteins inside. So uh, animal cells uh, do not contain these uh, vacuoles, they are only present in the plant cells. Okay, so chloroplast. So chloroplast is another organelle that is only pre present in, uh, in the plant cell. And uh, what is the function of chloroplast, anyone? Do you guys remember? What is the uh, function of a chloroplast? Hey guys, some question. Everything is clear because you are very quiet today. You have to participate in the class when the teacher, uh, Luciana Monterosa, say that all is clear. <laughs> But guys, um, you know, you, if you have, you know, you have some opinion, you can tell me the teacher, okay? Yes. 
Okay, so this is the uh, structure, the inside structure of the chloroplast, the inner membrane. Uh, we have uh, thylakoid cells and we have stroma and the light reactions take part in this portion of the uh, chloroplast. A very interesting molecule uh, which helps uh, plants to synthesize uh, their uh, food with the help of the process of photosynthesis that we'll see that we will see in a minute. Okay, so this is the cell wall or a plant cell. So cell wall again uh, in the beginning, as, as I said that uh, cell wall is only found in the plant cell and it gives the shape uh, and the rigidity, the, the hardness of uh, to the plant. Uh, some uh, plants, you know, like and they are they are they are difficult uh, to to manage. Their environment is a very uh, we can say a dangerous or crucial. We are sitting inside our homes and plants. They are outside in the open rain. So uh, those cells need protection. So cell wall protects the uh, inside of the cell of the organelles from the uh, harsh environment, from the climate. Okay, so uh, now we have uh, studied before that uh, the cellular organization, we, we, we know that cell is uh, a basic structural and functional uh, unit. So what happens here? Uh, so uh, the uh, an organelle, so like mitochondria, uh, ribosome, Golgi bodies, or endoplasmic reticulum, all of these uh, compound, uh, these uh, um, like different uh, compounds we can say or structures, they they join together and they form a cell. So this is a cell here. So then cells, they combine with each other and they uh, make tissues. So we have skeletal tissues, we have uh, heart muscles, right? Uh, we have uh, here, so we have different types of tissues uh, that are composed of cells. So when tissues, they combine together, they form uh, an organ. So many uh, tissues, they, they combine together, they form a heart. So can you guys name organs? What are organs, anyone? Can you guys name some of the organs, please? So what are the names of uh, the, uh, the organs inside the human body, anyone? Say, um, Heart. Yes, uh, Luciana said heart, very good. Another one. Any, any uh, organ, brain, very good, very good. Brain, uh, eyes, okay, uh, liver, and we have a stomach. So all of these are uh, organs, right? So when lots of organs, they combine together, and they make an organ system. So, so what is this organ system that is represented here? Can you guys name it? What is, what is the name of this system that is being shown in, the, in this picture? Let me give you a hint. It, has, it, it is related with the food processing. So it is called digestive system, right? Digestive system. So this, so we have a stomach here. This is one organ. We have liver. This is another organ. We have intestines. So this is another organ. So three or four different types of organs are combined together and they created an organ system. And when these systems, they combine together, they make us, they make us, they make human, right? The, the, entire, the entire human body. So the, the entire human body can go all the way up to cell and uh, the cell 
organelle. So this is how uh, we say that we are made up of cells and cell is the basic unit, structural and functional unit of our bodies. So this was all about uh, the uh, animals uh, and plant cells. Uh, now we are talking about photosynthesis and metabolism. So in photosynthesis, what happens that we have this plant here and photosynthesis is a process that is special to plants. Uh, it only takes place in plants and it does not take place in animals, right? And uh, by photosynthesis, animals, uh, plants, they make their food and we will see that how uh, this process works. So this is a plant which has been planted in the soil. So these we have roots here. So plants, they take water from with the help of these roots from the ground and sunlight from the atmosphere and carbon dioxide from the environment. So you can see that this arrow, it is going inside the plant and water, it is going inside uh, the roots and sunlight, it is going inside the leaves. So these three components are required uh, for a plant to perform photosynthesis. And uh, we have uh, like mesophyll cells in the leaves. This is the structure here. So this is the outermost layer of a leaf. It is called cuticle. Then we have uh, epidermis and then, then we have a palisade mesophyll. So these are special uh, cells of plants that contain a chloroplast. We just talked about chloroplast a few slides back in our presentation, in our lecture. So you can see here that this is a chloroplast and it contains a nucleus. So this is the diagram that we, we, we studied before. So we can see here that water, sunlight, and carbon dioxide. So these three components are entering uh, this st cellular structure called chloroplast. And uh, these thylakoid cells that we just talked about, so they convert these three into ATP. ATP is energy, uh, adenine triphosphate. Let me type it for you guys here, adenine try phosphate. This is the molecule that uh, provides uh, energy to the plants, right? And, and during this process, this whole process, the cycle is called Kelvin cycle. You guys need to remember this. And oxygen, light dependent reaction, and uh, glucose, uh, it is converted into a glucose. So what happened in the photosynthesis that a plant took three components, water, sunlight, and a carbon dioxide, and converted uh, these three into uh, oxygen and a glucose. So this is the basic principle of uh, uh, photosynthesis, and uh, it is also related to metab metabolism that we will see in a minute. Okay. So here is light. We have H2O, water, and now this is represented in a molecular form. We, and then we have carbon dioxide. And uh, we have another molecule here that is called NADPH. You need to remember this. And, and these uh, cells or thylakoid cells, which are present in uh, chlorophyll molecule or chloroplast, they convert these into carbon fixation reactions and sugars, fatty acids, and amino acids are produced, which are used by the plant as a food. So this is the uh, essential equation that you need to remember. So uh, in the previous slide, I, show, I explained it to you guys with the help of uh, pictures. So now uh, as, a, as a science student, as a student of biology and chemistry, you need to remember uh, and identify these components. We have six molecules of carbon dioxide. 
which plants take from the environment and uh, solar energy from sun. And we have six molecules of water, uh, which plants take from uh, the ground with the help of their roots. And then photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplast and it is converted into glucose. Uh, the formula, the chemical formula for glucose is uh, C6H12O6 and oxygen is released. Uh, six molecules of oxygen uh, are released in the environment. So that is why we say that plants uh, are essential for our survival. They are very important for the purification of the environment and do not cut trees and plant trees in your environment as, as many trees uh, you guys can plant. So uh, trees can save our environment, right? Why? Because uh, they produce oxygen and uh, us humans, uh, we breathe this oxygen and uh, oxygen is essential for the human and animal survival uh, on this planet without oxygen. Uh, living uh, things cannot survive. Okay, so again, uh, you guys can see here another picture. What happens inside uh, uh, the metab metabolism? So we have food here, A, B, C. We have different types of foods. We have meat, we have fruits, we have vegetables. So what happens when we eat them? So the, this food is broken down into uh, different components. So the, break, the breaking down of the food that we eat is called uh, catabolic pathways, or we call it uh, catabolism. And then uh, when they are broken down, energy is released and heat is produced. And with the help of this energy, um, different molecules are synthesized, which are required uh, for our body. Uh, to, to, to function properly. So the building up, the, the manufacturing, uh, the creation of molecules in our bodies you know, with, the, with the food that we eat, that is called anabolism or anabolic pathways. So this is the uh, two types of uh, uh, metabolism that takes place inside the cell or inside our bodies. Okay, so what is happening uh, like uh, with the metabolism in our bodies? Uh, if you guys look at this picture here, so this is called ATP and ADP cycle. Uh, so ATP, uh, I have written it here in the chat box, adenine, uh, triphosphate, and ADP, uh, we mean adenine diphosphate, di means two, just like by. So look here, energy absorbed from food. So when, when we eat the food, so energy is absorbed and with the help of phosphate, it is converted into ATP, adenine, triphosphate. So tri, we mean, uh, by tri, we mean three. So one, two, and three. So these are three uh, phosphate molecules uh, that get attached uh, to this ATP molecule. So, when energy is released, when we when we work, when we exercise, okay. So when we run, when you are working, so what what is what is happening inside our bodies? So this molecule is is broken down uh, into uh, and converted into ADP. This phosphate is lost. So these three uh, phosphates they convert back into two phosphates, and it is converted into diphosphate. So as I explained to you guys that di means two. So you can see here, it is left with uh, two molecules. Okay, uh, so this is how uh, the um, anabolism and catabolism works inside our bodies. So now uh, we are moving towards the final uh, topic of, of the lecture and uh, that is called uh, cellular respiration. So when, so can anyone tell me the difference between a breathing and respiration? What is the difference between breathing and respiration? Breathing versus respiration, anyone?
when we breathe air, when we breathe oxygen from the environment, yes, inhaling, Daniel, very good. So inhaling is breathing, right? So when you breathe in the oxygen from the environment and then you are exhaling. So this is what breathing. This is not respiration. Some students get confused uh, between uh, breathing and inhaling. So keep in your mind that there is a difference between uh, breathing and respiration, right? Respiration is a process that uh, takes place uh, at, uh, you know, at a cellular level. Our cells are responsible for respiration. That is why we call it cellular respiration, right? So in short, when cells, they absorb uh, the food molecules and they release energy. So this process is called respiration. So I hope it is clear that breathing and uh, respiration are two different things. So do not confuse uh, breathing with uh, respiration. So, okay. So let us see that what happens in, uh, uh, the, uh, in the cellular respiration. So six molecules of uh, like glucose or uh, like uh, a glucose with six carbons, C6H12O6, what happens that uh, it is broken down, right? Glycolysis. Lysis means to break down, right? Lysis means to, to break down. So this uh, glucose molecule uh, is broken down into what happens that two ATP and from two uh, NADH, uh, it forms two ATP. When the glucose molecule is, is broken down, it, it, it creates ATP, right? Four molecules of ATP. So this is stage one. So this is the stage one of the cellular respiration. And now stage two. What happens is that there are other molecules. For example, we have two NADH, we have eight NADH. So they are interconverted from three carbons to three carbons, pyruvate and pyruvate. And uh, a carbon dioxide is released, two molecules, when we have two NADH. And when they become eight, so they produce four uh, molecules of carbon dioxide, two FADH2. And this is the uh, gas or, or the molecule that we exhale. When, when we inhale oxygen, so for cellular respiration, yes, this is a group. This is a, a group of molecules that work together and they change one another during the process of respiration. I hope it's clear, Daniel. Okay. That's good. So remember that uh, glucose is broken down uh, into uh, these uh, groups of molecules and they release carbon dioxide. And this process takes place in the presence of oxygen when we inhale. So when we take in the oxygen from the environment, it reaches blood and from blood oxygen reaches cells. So by using uh, this oxygen and the glucose that we eat from our food. So carbon dioxide and energy is produced. Energy is used by the cell. And when we exhale, so we, we release this carbon dioxide that was produced during the process of the cellular respiration. So it is an ongoing process, 24 hours, 24 seven, all the time. It never stops because breathing never stops and uh, cellular respiration never stops. If cellular respiration stops, it means that something is wrong or uh, uh, the person will die. He will not be able to survive. So oxy this is called uh, oxidative phosphorylation. And uh, we have at, at the end 34 molecules of energy ATP are produced. So this is the uh, stage three. So you just need to remember uh, that the three stages that the glucose is broken down into ATP, 
uh, and in the first step we get four molecules of ATP. In the second step, this this is again converted into two, and uh, at the end again from these two NADH and NFADH two we get thirty four molecules of ATP. So this is uh, we call this cellular respiration. And uh, this, this topic is very, very important from the uh, exam point of view. And you need to remember this uh, and these three stages. So this is another diagram uh, that is uh, explaining the process that, that uh, I explained to you guys with the help of picture here. So this is the equation, just like I showed you guys the equation for uh, photosynthesis. So we have an equation here. So uh, C6H12O6, uh, glucose molecule. And when, as I said, when you take in the oxygen, right? When you breathe. So this glucose inside our bodies, it reacts with this oxygen and carbon dioxide is produced. Water is produced and 36 molecules of ATP, and this, which, which, which we call energy. So 36 molecules of energy is produced. So you can see here, it's a very tasty, delicious uh, pie. So this uh, guy is eating the pie. So it contains uh, glucose, right? C6H12O6 and breathing, uh, oxygen. So when oxygen, and this glucose, it comes down to the cellular level. So what happens is that ATP is released and this process takes place in the mitochondria. I told you guys that mitochondria is the kitchen, right? Where cells prepare their food and ATP is the cellular food, right? And heat is released in the form of energy, uh, which, which makes you walk, which makes you talk, which makes you work, right? So uh, when you are running, so this is the uh, process that is taking place uh, inside your body. A very, very important, very uh, interesting topic, right? Very, very highly knowledgeable topic. Okay, so this was uh, the lecture for today and uh, we, we are moving toward the lesson summary. So we discussed about various uh, cell organelles ribosomes, nucleus, Golgi bodies, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, cell membrane, cytoplasm, right? And uh, uh, lysosomes, peroxisomes, and all their functions. So I hope you guys have noted the lecture down and you guys can uh, revise from these notes. So we have photosynthesis, you, you know the reaction, okay? Uh, oxygen is produced in the photosynthesis and then metabolism, we have uh, uh, catabolism and anabolism. And then we have cellular respiration where 36 molecules of ATP are produced when glucose is uh, broken down in the presence of oxygen. So this was uh, it from my side. This was today's lecture. And uh, uh, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Ahmad. Excellent class. Thank you. Uh, have a wonderful day for you, Ahmad. Hey, guys, thank you for being here. Um, and have a wonderful day to 